How y'all doing? Great. 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 Appreciate you coming in, Coach. Sure. You, you came here to be a, a assistant <laughs> and you end up thrust into a full-time role. Can you talk about that transition last year and how that worked out? You know, I, first of all, I really appreciate the opportunity. Coach Smart came, you know, gave me the opportunity to come back to my alma mater, to here to Georgia, uh, to live in Athens. It's been, a, been an awesome experience, obviously. Um, but an unfortunate situation with Coach Cochran. Uh, and uh and and handling that and and uh, certain was ready to step on the field and and do you know I've asked players as a head coach and a coordinator and a position coach for a lot of years to do the best job you can in your role in the organization and I when I was an analyst I wanted to do the best job I could do to be an analyst when I was asked to be the special teams coordinator and work with the safeties and stars then that's what I was do the best job I can do there and uh that's that's the way I've always approached things uh, in your role in the organization and do the best job I can do for Coach Martin. Yeah, Will, you've got two freshmen back there at safety and Malachi Stars and Corey Thompson. What have you seen from them so far in, in fall camp and what does their uh, potential, I guess, in terms of being a safety or a star and how much you cross training those guys? Well, right now we're, we're training both of them to be safeties. Marcus Washington is also another young man that's playing uh, star position, but uh, all three of those guys are good young players. Uh, obviously, Malachi and Jacory have benefited going through spring, so they have a little bit better understanding of you know practice organization, schematically things we do, and that'll come with Marcus. Uh, but uh, you know both are going to be really good players. You know when that happens, I don't know. We're only in practice five in training camp, so it's very early to tell on anything. Uh, but but I'm really excited about both players. <clears throat> Coach, switching over to the outside linebackers, you got a couple of two guys that came in very high acclimate. Uh, I, uh, Clay, yeah. well acclaimed. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, Marvin Jones Jr. and Michael Williams? Well, both guys, uh, I, again, we're, we're in practice five. Uh, so. Uh, excited about both guys. You know, both guys have some twitch. They both have pass rush ability. Uh, we're going to be first time in full pads today. And that's actually how you play the game nowadays, in full pads. So we'll know a lot more as we continue to move forward. But I'm glad both of them are at the University of Georgia. I've been called a lot of things, but that, you go ahead with whatever you want. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, well, I, I didn't really know, I knew of Glenn, but I didn't know really know Glenn till last year and had a wonderful working experience with he and, and Dan and Trey Scott. And obviously, Coach Smart is on the defensive side of the ball a lot. Um, but we had a, a really good rapport as far as our you know what we needed to do to be successful, and there's nothing's going to change with that. We have a great working relationship. Glenn's promotion, in my opinion, is very well deserved. He's an outstanding football coach. He's extremely bright. Um, he has a great rapport with his players, uh, you know, and you really look at the, you know, Coach Smart's going in the seventh season here at Georgia, you know, the two longest tenured coaches would probably, are Glenn and, and Dale McGee, and you really look over those seven years, consistency of their position groups probably is the best uh, th that's been here in those seven years, you know, arguably, I'm sure that's different years, but, um, but his position's been very productive. He's recruited extremely well at his position. Uh, he's just an outstanding football coach. He has a very good understanding of what we do defensively, how we adjust things out, um, and, and he's always looking for a better way to do it and always researching those things and what can we do to get better uh, in those situations. But I really enjoy working with Glenn just because the intelligence, the football intelligence he has and the passion he brings uh, to the job every single day because those things are really important and the players see that. And they understand how invested he is in them. In terms of just walking around this building every day since you've been here, what's it like just running into Kirby in the hallway, running into Bobo, um, McClendon, all the having? Yeah. What's it like having all these Georgia guys back on a staff? That, you know, just won the national championship. Well, that's great. I mean, it's uh, you know, again, I appreciate Coach Mark giving me the opportunity to be here. Uh, obviously, I think Mike's a great addition for us. Brian McClendon is a great addition for us. Todd Hartley, another Georgia graduate. Uh, I mean, the, all of those guys are guys that I'm more familiar with Coach Smart and Coach Bobo. 
uh, and Coach, Coach McClendon. I'm um, getting to know Todd in the last year. The guy's an outstanding football coach. But all those guys have a vested interest in the University of Georgia. And uh, not that we didn't know other places, but at the end of the day, this is where you went to school. And, uh, and, and certainly glad to be here. But I enjoy working with people. You, you, know, cause, you know, I told the players one night when I was talking to them, you know, we, we spend more time with you guys and our coaching staff than we do our own families. I'm not proud to say that, but that's just – this is not a job. It's a lifestyle. That's, that's what it is. And so um, you like to be able to spend time with people that you enjoy being around. And, and we certainly do. And I credit Coach Smart and the staff that he's hired. Uh, there, there's people in the building that you, love, you enjoy coming to work uh, because you like what you do, but you also like the people you're working with. And that's important. And how, if I might add, just how, how neat is it to be so close to your brother? Is he still love it? Yeah, he is. Just yeah. how close has that relationship been since you got that out of state? Well, our entire family, my brother Pat's in Rome, my mom's in Mentone, Alabama. Um, you know, uh, my father passed seven years ago last May, but, uh, uh, you know, it's, you know, family's important. My wife's family's in Thomaston, Georgia. So it's the first time in our, you know, career we've been close and, and been able to get back and see everybody, and we're a very close-knit family, so that's, that's awesome. No. No, I, I really think that number one, I credit again coach and the staff of the young men we've recruited. I mean, you know, we've got a really good group of young men that we enjoy coaching. Uh, I, like I mentioned earlier about working with the staff, working with a head coach that philosophically you are aligned with of what you want or how you need to practice the type of players you're looking for in recruiting, how you want to play middle field coverage, how you want to play split safety coverage, how you want to play pattern match. Not to say that we agree on everything because we don't, but that's healthy. It's healthy to not agree. Uh, and so, again, what is your role in the organization? Do the best job you can in the role you have. And if you don't like it, go somewhere else. You know, it's real simple. So I, I love my role. I, I told my wife the other day, I think I got the best job in America. And in the end of the day, the room that I have – that I'm honored to coach the young men in that room, uh, to be at the University of Georgia, uh, to see the, our future as, as we continue to unfold and move forward. Um, you know, I'm really excited about it. Hey, well, good to see you again. Yeah. Uh, being uh, that you go against these guys, you see these guys every day, what's the biggest uh, problem the tight ends are going to give up because he's a coordinator? Right. Well, I just think it's just, you know, obviously the matchup issues you have. Uh, you, you saw the season that Brock had last year. A uh, very difficult cover, uh, really good with his body and his balance uh, to be able to bounce off people, outstanding hands. Uh, you know, Darnell is a guy that's really difficult uh, as far as just his length is concerned. And I think the combination of, uh, of those things are very difficult to deal with. And then we've got some really good players past those guys. So, uh, you know, and I think Todd and our offensive staff do a great job of, um, you know, putting them in positions to be successful in the offense as far as, you know, really uh, – gearing things toward their skill set, you know, and what they do well. And, and uh, so difficult to defend, I think, number one, from just a football player standpoint, because it's not necessarily all about the, the scheme, it's about the players. And then putting them in a position to be successful, and then those guys taking advantage of those situations, it's players. Bash, actually, still my question. I was going to ask you as a defensive coordinator, when you go ones versus ones, what it's like to face, you know, Darnell Washington and uh, Brock Bowers. But let me get your thoughts on well, I think, you know, Stetson's really smart, number one. You know, I think he knows where to take the ball uh, based on coverage. Uh, you know, really, really smart as far as football intelligence is concerned. He's a really good athlete. He runs extremely well. So you've got to defend his legs as well. And he throws the ball extremely well. So I think that's a very good combination at the quarterback position uh, to have. And uh, obviously, uh, going into last season, you know, that you see a guy that really persevered through, you know, maybe not being where he wanted to be, but continued to work to be where he wanted to be. And uh, you got to give him a lot of credit. When you have a lot of turnover on defense, how do you go about, especially during camp, building up that camaraderie chemistry? Yeah. Kind of well, I think as a staff, that's something we've been really cognizant of, of, of making sure that, you know, just creating the best version of each of those young men every single day and continue to develop leadership, continue to develop uh, the, the mental and physical toughness that you're going to need to have in our league uh, to, to play and to be successful. We understand what good looks like around here. We also understand what elite looks like around here. And, and the standard doesn't change. 
the standard's the standard that's been set uh, by the head football coach, and, and our players and our staff understand that. Hey, guys, just wondering, what, what does Fran Brown bring to this yeah. university, given you know, his background is pretty different from every other coach in the staff? What is your relationship like with him as the cornerback's coach in the new Yeah, it's outstanding. Fran is a great person to work with from Camden, New Jersey. Got an interesting story as, he, as he's grown up through this. But, uh, uh, again, another guy that's got a great rapport with the players, uh, but a joy to work with as far as ball is concerned. Wants to talk about our scheme, our system. Sometimes this scheme is very difficult for a first year in the scheme coach, uh, but a guy that's, you know, he's got a very diligent, great work ethic, uh, and I, I, it is a joy to work with the guy. I mean, the guy has been awesome, and he's done a great job for us recruiting uh, and representing us in a first-class manner. I, I'm really excited about his future here at Georgia. <clears throat> Yeah. He talked about, you know, helping Jacory and Malachi. Yeah. What does it do not only having a super senior like that to come back, a guy you can trust, but also a guy that's willing to work with you? No doubt. And that, that's so important. And Chris is a very, very intelligent football player and a person. Uh, but he, but he's, uh, you know, Chris has been coached very well, Coach Smart. He understands and knows the sk- system very well to have a guy that's able to lend a hand to, to young players. Because sometimes I think, you know, as coaches, as I've gotten older, our stuff falls on deaf ears after a while. And to be able to have a player sit down with a with a with an older player sit down with a younger player, that's vitally important for your progress and development of a young player. And, and you know, I saw it last night. Billy Poole grabs Marcus Washington. And I'm trying to explain something to Marcus and Billy. He goes, Coach, I got it. You know, which Bill Poole graduated two days ago. So that's a heck of a deal too. But you know, the, when you see those sort of things, uh, again, they get tired of Coach Muschamp sometimes, but they'll listen to a peer. And, and that's really, really important to have as you kind of continue to work your way in the program and, and the culture that you create. And, and again, I, again, I, I credit Coach Martin and the staff for that. I'll kind of think you back on Jordan's question with some other safety. You being a North Florida guy, how neat is it to see Dan Jackson kind of come into the sure. last year? And what does that, what does that mean? To, what does a guy like that mean to the program? He's the second best walk on safety in Georgia history, I think. <laughs> You figure out who the first one was. But finish your question. What you say? What was the last part? Yeah, what, what does that mean? What does a guy like that mean for the program? Well, you know, everybody loves Dan. Uh, you know, the guy is his approach to his craft, to his improvement. Well, he has made tremendous improvement in, in my time here at Georgia, not because of me, because of him and his work ethic and his approach about going, doing the things and addressing the things he needed to improve on. You know, huge block punt. Uh, you know, this past year against Arkansas, huge momentum swing in the game. Uh, and then when Chris got banged up late in the year, uh, and then in our dime package as we continued to evolve in the secondary as the year wore on and we got a little better, his his role was huge as far as those things were concerned. But I, I, I think, you know, you talk in terms of just respect on the team, uh, the guy's garnered a lot of respect amongst his teammates and certainly his coaching staff. Take two more questions. Well, I'm talking a little bit defensive line. We don't know that much about because they were playing behind some really good players last year. Can you tell us a little bit about Nazir Stackhouse and uh, Tyrion England Dalton? Well, Nazir is a guy again. You know, it, we're we're, we're f- five days into camp and we're putting full pads on today, so we'll we'll learn a lot more about these guys. We don't really change how we practice, but certainly uh, continuing to to build the consistency you have up front. Trey Scott does a phenomenal job uh, with our defensive line and the development of our defensive line. Because some of those guys weren't really high ranked recruits when they came in here, and they got developed too. I think Trey's as good a defensive line coach I've ever worked with. So um, I, I'll put Ty and and, and Nas and our entire room in Trey's hands and and let him develop those guys as we continue to move forward. But I've seen improvements drastically in my time with Nas and obviously Ty, uh, you know, last fall a little bit, but he made huge strides in the spring. And we got to continue. We're, 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 we got to get a lot better. I, I know I do know that. Uh, so, and, and especially at that position, how critical that is and the number of snaps we lost in our front seven, we've got to continue to take strides forward. Yeah. What, what did you see in Kirby then, one, and then part two? You've seen George on the outside from every darn angle there is. What has he brought here that's, that's separated this group? Well, I think that, you know, first of all, you, you see a guy that's a great competitor. You know, he's a fierce competitor. Um, and, and that goes way beyond his coaching days. That's Noontime Basketball Association at Valdosta State. 
Uh, we almost got in several fights, but uh, but we've matured since then. Um, but now he's a great competitor, extremely bright, does a great job with the players as far as relating with the players, motivating the players, continuing to challenge himself, to challenge our staff and our football team uh, on a daily basis for a very high standard. Uh, he's got an element of toughness about himself, of knowing what it takes to be successful uh, in our organization and in this league, a great understanding of our league, which I think is a huge part of being successful. You either adapt to what happens in our league. I'm, that football stuff's different. I'm talking about recruiting. I'm talking about all the different things that go into being successful in this league. And he certainly has done that and, and has done a phenomenal job here at Georgia. Uh, but, but a guy that, uh, you know, all around uh, from a staff standpoint, from a roster management standpoint, uh, and, and the, the elements of toughness to what we've got to do to be successful. Again, you know, I could probably count on one hand the, the amount of maybe not so good practices we had last year. Now, that's a lot of credit to our young men on our team because of the leadership and things like that. But that's also the culture that's been set of how we're going to practice at Georgia. You know, you go to a Tuesday practice here, it's, it's a thing of beauty. I mean, it's, that's the way you're supposed to get after it and it's the way you're supposed to go after it. But it's what it's expected. It's what's set from the top all the way down within the organization. And it's understood that's the way we're going to do things. So, again, I credit him with that. Thank you. All right, thanks.